I assure you, genuine clients who can afford to pay will also come. Your reputation will rise by word of mouth. You don't have to advertise. And you also get to know with people there. You go to the local uh, panchayats, talk to them. You address the NGOs. You go and address the colleges there. You will build up. Then your neighborhood, you know, in your next neighbor wants a divorce. Or the neighbor on the left wants a domestic violence case prosecuted. Yes? So you hear the cries of the woman every day. You can go and ask what the problem the woman thinks I am getting beating. Why do you suffer beating? These are the alternative suggestions that is available to you. How do I do? How do I talk to my husband? Counsel them. Not that you must go and get diagnosis for your neighbor. But the way that the litigation is coming to you by building up your confidence and your competence to the people who are in need of their rights being ventilated, these are the standards. This is hard work. Do it for one year, ladies and gentlemen, I assure you, you have built your law firm. The cost of which is less than two to three lakhs, for which any bank will give you a loan. Why do you need a senior at all if you have good education? And if you do not have, did not have good education, go to your finishing school at acquire, but start on your own. Don't go for a senior education to be enrolled in his firm. This is what I call the lawyer's cooperative, but the fees should be fixed. I do not know how lawyers charge fees, which I will tell you about. But I believe that lawyers should charge with fixed fees rather than fees for every hearing or fees to be negotiated at the end of the case. No, this is not fair. The client should know that he has this problem and to sort out this problem, this is the money that he has to shut out. Reasonable. Of course, it may increase if further complications arise. So therefore, you must have a policy in your law cooperating as to how you will charge fees for services. And split it. Fees for court process. You have to deposit a court fee, you have to deposit a service fee at some level which are actual costs, which are not your fees. And then your fees separately. So give an impression to the client. Madam, I will litigate your divorce petition, but whether you get the divorce or not, I cannot assure you. Don't promise that I will get a divorce. You cannot. It is given by the court. But I will do my best in that regard. This is my fee. This is the court cost. Can you afford it? You would say, no, I cannot afford it. I have made this much saving. Okay, I am going to do legal aid for you, taking this reduced degree. But be very clear about it. And stick to that. Stick to that. If that is something which sends a message, this is part of professionalism. If law is a profession, it has a code of conduct. It has to have. And that code of conduct is self-imposed, not from anybody from outside. You are supposed to follow it by yourself as a professional. If you fail to follow that, then the bar council will come, or the courts may come. So, lawyering is a public service. As you know, originally the lawyers never accepted fees when it started out in England. I am told that at the, the ground that they stitched, there was a small mouse. And a satisfied client at the end of the case used to put some shillings into that mouse without the knowledge of the lawyer. Because the lawyer is not supposed to demand fees for services. That was the way it started. And when he took out the ground, some shillings fell down and the wife counted all those shillings and that is what we earned. But eventually, of course, the fee system and today even the contingency fee. What is that? You have a case, your husband is killed in a motor accident, no problem. Here is 5,000 rupees, go ahead and enjoy. When they
the insurance company pays, I will get it. I will fight and get the amount. Five lakhs for you, for the death of your husband. But three lakhs will be mine. Two lakhs will be yours. Lawyers are making money. What? I said three lakhs. That is because I am a reasonable lawyer. But ordinary lawyers will say fifty thousand is for you. Four lakh fifty thousand is mine. So this is contingency fees which is unethical in our country but lawyers are doing that also. Well, what fees I leave with you, there is something which... Uh, so any question with respect to the lawyers collecting, all of you are going to be now individual entrepreneurs setting up your own law offices unless two or three of you are the same mind, lawyers together, etc. But you are not going to campus recruitment nor are you going to be an employee of a corporate law firm or being recruited by any government or other agency but a lawyer by your own right. Preferably to undertake cases for those for whom there is nobody to hear. The unmet legal needs of the lost millions who are not being attended to by lawyers today. Are you prepared for that? In fact, there are some at my instance have started this. And I have assisted them by asking the senior advocates, Pedro Kupal, Nariman, Sarathi and others, look, you have a lot of corporate work coming. Initially, you have to do a lot of research to prepare the documentation. I will get you the work done as quickly as possible, as competently as possible. How he said, when Gopal asked me, I said, here is a law firm in Pune by three young bright law graduates. They are competent to do research and prepare the documentation as you require within 24 hours, 48 hours. Would you give it to them? Why? All means. And I give them 50,000 rupees for that work. Several such individual entrepreneurs have been given research and documentation work by senior advocates, by law firms, and this is all legal outsourcing. Not only the legal outsourcing from America to India, but from New Delhi to Pune. Why not? This is available for the young lawyers to accept and grow. Provided you have competence, you have integrity, you have reasonable fees that you will not cheat. Because once you cheat, once you do not deliver, grow. No more. This is where hard work and industry is required. Well, for those who are not prepared to do that, well, if you want to be a head, like the judicial service example. I am told by the law minister that today we have about 15,000 lawyers. Within five to six years, we will have 60,000 lawyers. Four times. So judges are required in large numbers, in life, as somebody there remarked. The lawyers in Greece will get also required. Now this government is prepared to invest. So more judges will come. And today, according to the law, a fresh law graduate they can take the judicial services examination. You don't have to be practicing for two years, three years, nothing like that. So you can straight away write the examination and become a junior civil judge who is paid more than the IAS. Today the judge's salary to begin with is at least 4,000 rupees more than what a correct IAS officer would get. Very good. But why should you take uh, that job when you can get 30,000, 1 lakh in a corporate firm? That's what the national officers who do not like to reach your service examination. So when we found that the, the, the prestigious national law schools are not even producing judges, the very high court chief justice, Chief Justice A.P. Shah, has gone to the national law school and said, I want to recruit from the law school as the law corporates are recruiting from the law school. So today, there is a tie up between the Delhi National Law University and the Delhi High Court that from the third year onwards there are certain optional subjects which are related to the judiciary. The teachers will move 